which diet is optimal for health, and more specifically, which diet is optimal for health from the evolutionary perspective. So in part three of our conversation with Dr. Michael Rose, we're going to go, go through data from his lab that compares health span for fruit flies that were raised on an evolutionary recent diet versus their ancestral diet. So first, uh, before jumping into the data, it's important to define some terms. So on the y-axis, we're looking at uh, P subscript X, M subscript X, which is defined as age-dependent fitness, which more specifically is equal to the product of the survival probability and fecundity, which is the ability to produce large amounts of offspring. And that's important because you don't want to have a, a longer lifespan and better health span, but produce less offspring. So this metric incorporates the ability to live longer and healthier and also produce lots of uh, children. So this uh, is a health span metric. So when looking at this health span metric on the y-axis plotted against the age on the x-axis, we can see that uh, on the evolutionarily recent diet, which is banana, uh, these flies have been raised uh, on banana for about a thousand generations over 30 years, about 30 years. Now, that may seem like a lot of generations, but in comparison, the ancestral diet, uh, for the ancestral diet, these flies have eaten apples. And the exact number of generations is unknown, but it is known that uh, fruit flies, Drosophila, have consumed apple for at least hundreds of years. So with that in mind, what does it look like uh, in terms of differences for health span on the recent diet versus the ancestral diet? So first, we can see that there is a better de age-dependent fitness at younger ages on the banana diet, the blue circles, when compared with the uh, apple diet, the red circles, at younger ages, so uh, 15 days old or younger. However, at older ages, uh, the, flu the flies that were raised on the evolutionarily recent diet, banana, uh, had a worse health span when compared with the ancestral diet, the apple, as you can see by the stars and the black arrows. So with that in mind, it seems like there's better health span on an evolutionary, evolutionary, evolutionary recent diet in youth, but a worth health, worse health span at older ages when compared with the ancestral diet. So what does this mean for human diets in terms of uh, the optimal diet for human health at older ages? And uh, also, what's, what's the importance of measuring systemic biomarkers to help identify the diet that is truly best for health span in people? So with these issues in mind, let's return to our conversation with Dr. Michael Rose. And in 2020 with Grant Rutledge, who I believe you've met and I know, um, it was his doctoral thesis. We showed uh, the relationship between evolutionary history, both recent and long term and diet. And <clears throat> Uh, speaking as somebody, you know, over 60, um, who started down this journey about uh, 10 years ago, I have had far better results from tuning ordinary foods in terms of my particular evolutionary history um, than I have ever had in your vein of intervention. Um, so I, my ancestry is mostly from the northwestern periphery of Eurasia, which means I'm not as well adapted to agricultural foods as somebody whose ancestry is Middle Eastern or South Asian. And um, fairly early on in my life, I started losing adaptation to agricultural foods. And as I got older through middle age, it got worse and worse. And so for my ancestry, as you approach, as you get into middle age, you have to eat fewer and fewer agricultural foods. If my ancestry were entirely from Australasia, like original Australasia before the Europeans showed up, um, I should never have consumed agricultural foods. You know, like bread and milk are toxic or people with entirely indigenous Australasian ancestry. And um, <clears throat> so there's a spectrum from the peoples who are wholly unadapted to agricultural foods because they didn't eat them at all before 200 years ago, which is like a, an instant in evolutionary time, to people from you know, places like Iraq or Pakistan, would be very well adapted to 
grain-based and milk-based diets potentially into their 50s. But I think by the time every human reaches their 60s, they're no longer adapted to agricultural foods because of the ways in which the forces of natural selection do too with age and a response to a recent evolutionary change, which if, if people go to my Google Scholar page and look up the most recent publications in 2020, they'll see two, in my opinion, fantastic publications from Grant Rutledge, R-U-T-L-E-D-G-E, on how to tune your diet according to your ancestry. And some and of the data, besides your own personal anecdote in, in how getting rid of the grains in your, in your diet actually improved your intestinal health. But beyond that, uh, what I guess you didn't mention was that uh, you actually switched uh, fruit flies who are raised on, uh, in lab diets, I guess it's on banana, banana-based and molasses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You yep, them yep. Closer to their ancestral diets, which is what more apple-based or uh, yes. right, fruit, fruit fly, right? So, and that extended their lifespan relative to the uh, lab-based diet of molasses, or was it banana? I can't, can't remember. It's banana and molasses. And, and, and the banana and molasses diet is, um, a diet to which some of our populations have adapted to for a thousand generations. That's actually longer than the period of time since the Neolithic Revolution in Europe, substantially longer. And nonetheless, they um, sometimes those flies perform better when young on their version, their agricultural diet, meaning their recent evolutionary diet. But at later ages, um, like our 60s or late 50s, a, a, a diet they have not seen for a thousand generations is better for them. Uh, which is, if somebody had told me about this experiment 20 years ago, I wouldn't believe it. But, but that's what the math suggested, uh, math done with my colleague Larry Muller. Um, and that's what Grant's experiments have shown, is that long abandoned diets if you have, if a species has recently changed its core dietary practices, and by recently clearly means, you know, less than 10,000 generations. So, um, and with respect to agricultural diets, there's no human population in which goes back more than a thousand generations on an agricultural diet. So, the principles are very general because the math is completely general. It's not, there's not, nothing specific about fruit flies or humans in the math, and it's very solid. And Grant's strong inference experimentation has supported that mathematical result. Um, so that turns out to be a pretty fantastic um, multi-supplement approach where the supplements are really foods. And you eliminate the toxic things, which for people over 50 are grains, rice, corn, food derived from milk, from any mammal, and uh, legumes, and your health will get a lot better. Um, it should also be said that brand new industrial food products that are novel to the human diet since 1850 Nobody's adapted to high fructose corn syrup. Nobody's adapted to processed seed oils. Um, nobody's adapted to trans fats. Those are, nobody's adapted to nitrites as a preservative. Those are somewhere in the toxin to poison spectrum. Yep. So, so then uh, when considering, when considering, all right, so I get, I get that after a certain age, we're not evolutionarily adapted you know, we, we can get away with eating those foods at a younger age, but when you get to a certain age and then we're just not evolutionarily mm -hmm. adapted because millions mm -hmm. of years of evolution, we grew, you know, we, we existed on a certain diet. So, but, you know, mm -hmm. not that I'm trying to justify uh, including the, the foods that we didn't evolve uh, eating, but, uh, you know, just as there are, you know, uh, about 5% of centenarians who can get there by smoking cigarettes, not that I would recommend mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes, at, you know, because ninety-five percent of the people who get there are, are not smoking cigarettes. But um, exactly, I think at the end of the day, it's important to uh, you know have some objective markers of health. Because if somebody can't yes. this, you know, because if they enjoy eating in a certain way, 
and they have biomarkers mm -hmm. of health that suggest that overall it's either net neutral or beneficial, then, you know, continue. Right. But I hear what you're saying for most people that is not going to be the case, but it, it's region specific, right? As you mentioned, 